Well, hi, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday Night Services at the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. I'm glad to be here. I hope everybody else is, and I'm sure that everybody is compared to the alternative. The rain is beautiful. Let's all stand up for prayer, please. Father, thank you for the wonderful moisture that comes from the sky. It feels like your love wrapping us around uh, all of our understanding of you. It helps us know that you are God because it's truly a miracle. Please have mercy on us and look down and hold all of us below in your everlasting arms and care and love for us as you do, as you always have, and as you will in the future. Watch over each and every one of us. Make us not afraid to raise our hands to you because you are God. We are here to worship you tonight, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. And we ask all of these things in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let's turn to page 395. page 227.
That's a beautiful old hymn there. I remember singing that, I don't know, almost two decades ago. It was really, a, it really used to rock the house, and it still sounds wonderful. Okay, well, we want to go to prayer. Uh, does anyone have any prayers tonight or anything that we would like to talk to the Lord about? Yes. Oh, absolutely. We want to pray for Reverend Ledger tonight and for all of our services that we get here morning, noon, and night. Sister Rhonda. Uh, unspoken. Unspoken. Okay. Yes, Anthony. Uh, John Peel and John at the uh, web series. Hopefully they have a good, successful life outside. Truly. Mm -hmm. I hope so, too. Yes, John. Another unspoken one. Let's keep praying for Tom Chilzer. Tom Chilzer. Tom Silver. Chilzer. For Chilzer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read what you're saying. <laughs> it sounds. It looks Chilzer. like you're saying seal, sir. <laughs> seal, sir. Okay. <laughs> We've got that one there. And. Lord, Lord, Lord. Yes. Test tomorrow. Everybody to be negative. Yes. Yes, for our testing tomorrow. Let's really pray on that that everybody comes out negative. And, yep. And that's in the morning there. Don't anybody forget that. I don't imagine anybody's going to let you forget about that. I want to pray for Mr. Penny, too, who's over in dorm four all by himself there. He's doing just fine. That's a really nice guy. Yes. You guys are going to like him, I think. Yes, Brother Black. Our country. For our country. Yes. As always, because uh, we always were underneath its laws, and uh, we're the ones that do the votes if you vote, so get out and vote, so we can't blame anybody. It's, it's uh, our choice. Yes, Anthony. A uh, special unspoken for myself, and uh, that uh, the government gets it back together and approves this next coronavirus stimulus package. Okay. More for the government there, definitely. Well, I want prayer. Oh, yes, Larry? For uh, God's wisdom and an unspoken. Yeah, I like your prayer. Yeah, that's something that you said. You told me that was the first thing that you said to me. Uh, but you didn't even know my name. I didn't really know your name. But that was the first thing that you said, and I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, well, I want prayer. Anybody else want prayer? All of us. Okay, let's stand for prayer. And let's see. Brother Stephen, would you pray for us? Lord God of heaven and earth, we praise you and bless you tonight, Father. We thank you again, Lord God, for the privilege of being in your house and meeting with you tonight, Lord God. Lord, we look for the hope and expectancy, Lord God, of your food tonight, Lord God, of your business tonight, Lord. And Lord, we lift up these requests that we make. We thank you, God, that you're a God that listens. You're a God that cares and you're a God that answers prayer. We thank you for that, Lord. We lift up this thing, Lord, with all these tests tomorrow. We pray for the Lord. We pray everybody here is negative, Lord God. We pray for negative tests tomorrow, Lord God. Oh, Father, you're in great position, Lord God. That's nothing for you. And we thank you for that, Lord God, in advance, Lord God. We thank you for the unspoken requests tonight, Lord God. You pray for those that you know the hearts and you know what they're about, Lord God. Father, we just ask that your anointing be on Brother Ledger tonight, Lord God. You give me up to you, Lord God. Oh, speak for us, Lord God. Bring your message to us tonight, Lord God. Open our hearts and ears to receive them tonight, Father. We thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for each person here tonight, Lord God. We know each one and you see every man there we know each one of them. God. You see that Father, I pray for those who don't know you yet, as they cry out in their hearts. I pray that, Lord, they will come to the saving knowledge of knowing you completely as Lord and Savior and give their lives to you and serve you, Lord God. Oh, Father, we thank you for all that you've done and all you're going to do and all you're doing. In your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. One more song, please. Oh, the offering, yes. Let's see, ushers, please. Anthony, would you pray for the 
Thank you, Lord, for this blessing that we received tonight. May it go to the people that need it. And bless those that do are able to donate to help others. Dear Lord, thank you for this mission, for helping us. And may it continue to help other people as well. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much. You guys are a bunch of great givers. That's really cool. Okay. All right. Let's turn to page 242, please. about you guys but whenever I say glory to his name it gives me the tingles uh, 
I'm so glad that I can feel that. I can feel it right now. It's like my hair stands on end. I, it's the Holy Spirit. Uh, it can. It's better than anything. Golly, I'm just glad that I can feel it right now. You guys can feel it too. I mean, if you just do it, just open up your heart and close your eyes or whatever it takes. Reach out there. Could get you some of that. That is just marvelous. It's wonderful. Okay. Well, sorry about that, but it's true. It feels great. Reverend Ledger, would you please uh, share with us the word of God you know, just brought on your heart? Amen. Glory to his name. Yes. Amen. You know, the three songs we sang tonight, I can remember singing. 40 years ago at Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Jesse, Joe, Lax, you remember. Amen. Been a long time. Still the same. Many, many people have come and gone from Fort Myers Rescue Mission. God is still the same. He hasn't changed. He's still the same. Amen. All right, well... One more time, 1 Samuel chapter 9. <laughs> I've never done this before, <laughs> but it's interesting. Another message from 1 Samuel chapter 9. It'll be different. You don't have to sigh. First Samuel chapter 9, reading verse number 15 and 16. Give everybody a chance to find it there. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin. Thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people, Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Well, Lord, thank you again for the word of God. And Lord, it just never ceases to amaze me how much you can get out of how little. So please bless your message tonight and bless your messenger and help me to speak this one more time. Lord, we, don't, we won't be back for at least a month and we don't know who will be here when we come back. But we pray that you would help us. Help us to speak tonight. Help our hearers to hear and understand. And give us grace and help and we'll thank thee in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. God said, I will send thee a man. So he told Samuel, I will send thee a man. Now, three days before this conversation took place, Saul's father lost a herd of donkeys. <laughs> That's right. So he sent Saul to find them. And he, when he and the servant could not locate the donkeys, Saul's servant suggested that they go and talk to the seer, who's now called the prophet, and inquire of the Lord what they should do next. Well, they arrived at the city just as Samuel got there to make a sacrifice for the people. Now, reading this account, it should be pretty obvious to all of us that this meeting of Samuel and Saul was not a coincidence, but was arranged by God. Amen. Two days before, God told Samuel, he said, I'm sending you somebody. One day before, he'll be here in the morning. Oh, 
and behold, there he is, right on time. So what happened was, is God engineered the circumstances so that Saul would be at the right place and the right time. Think of that. I mean, I mean, there wasn't six billion people on the earth then, but there was a whole bunch. But God had a plan. And he's working it out. And so Saul and Samuel met. And in due season, Samuel anointed Saul king of Israel. Now let's think about somebody else. Remember Ruth? Now Ruth was a Moabite widow that she put her trust in the living God and Naomi, her mother-in-law. And she came to Israel just depending upon God. And in Ruth chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Ruth went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light upon a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred or the relative of Emelech. That would have been her father-in-law. She married his son, and his son died. And now she's a widow. The Bible says it was her hap, or she just happened to be there when Boaz showed up, who, by the way, ended up being her future husband. And again, God arranged their meeting because Ruth would be another Gentile to enter into the lineage of Christ. Think of it. If you look over there in chapter 1, you'll find Ruth and Boaz down there. Now, let's jump over to Matthew chapter 1 tonight. If you want to read along with me, you can, or you can just listen. I'm reading in Matthew chapter 1, verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So the Lord had prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, that a virgin should have a child and the baby should be the Son of God. Furthermore, God foretold where Jesus would be born. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 5, it tells us it would be in the city of Bethlehem. Because when the, uh, uh, who was that? Herod wanted to know where Jesus was going to be born. He went to the priests and the, the Jewish leaders and said, where does the Bible say that Jesus will be born? And they said in verse 5, in Bethlehem of Judah, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, art thou not least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So, the reference made there is in Malachi chapter 2, verse 5. But thou, Bethlehem, out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel. So Mary, the mother of Jesus, being great with child, is living in the city of Nazareth, which is 90 miles away, or one week's journey, from Bethlehem. Now, in order to fulfill the prophecy, Mary must be in Bethlehem when Jesus is born. But she doesn't know that, and neither does Joseph. Now look at Luke chapter 2. Matthew, Mark, Luke chapter 2. Verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus, who was the current king, that all the world should be taxed. 
or enrolled, as our margin says. It was part of a census, but obviously there was money involved. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now this Augustus, Caesar Augustus, he made a law that everybody has to return to the city where they were born and pay a tax. And so Joseph, being a God-fearing man, he obeyed the laws of the land. Did you know that? He traveled 90 miles to the home of his ancestor, King David, to be counted in the census. Now, there were lots of people that are lawless in the land today. People desiring their rights. I ask you tonight, what about God's word which says, and I quote, obey those in authority over you? You know, there's a rebel spirit in the land. And Christians ought to give us pause and cause us to check and see if we have any of that rebel spirit in us. Now, I recognize that if the government asks us to do something that's contrary to God's word, then we have a place where we can say, because God's word exceeds the government, I'm standing with God. Amen. But where that doesn't apply, it looks to me like we're expected to do what they say. I would like us to consider that in spite of all the words about tyranny and oppressive government in America, most of those people don't have a clue what they're talking about. The oppression that went on during the time Jesus was on the world was much greater. And there's many places in the world today where it's much greater. I think that we need to keep our nose in the book <laughs> and obey the word of God. Now, I don't know why Joseph chose to take Mary with him when he went to Bethlehem. Obviously, she's one week away from being delivered. Sounds like a pretty rough journey, even in a carriage or on a donkey, or walking 90 miles. I looked it up, and a, and a, a person in good shape can walk 90 miles in about three days, taking regular rest and eating right. And of course, that might not be across the desert like they were doing. But Mary went with him, and they arrived in Bethlehem, and the place was jammed with people because everybody all over the country was going to their hometown to be counted. And so by the time Joseph and Mary got there, there wasn't any place to stay. It wasn't that they were poor folks, they just couldn't find a hotel room. So the only available shelter was a stable. And that's where Christ was born. Now think about this. Again and again, God organizes circumstances to bring his plans to flourishing. We could go on and on with this. Examples of the Lord's intervention in the lives of men and women for his glory. Remember King David. He was trapped by Saul. Saul's army had completely surrounded him and the few guys he had with him. They were closing in and getting ready to kill him. When all at once, in the nick of time, Saul gets word that the Philistines have invaded the land. 
And off he goes, leaving David free. When Joseph, Jacob's son, was sold as a slave into Egypt by his own brothers, you know what Jacob said? All these things are against me. He didn't know God's plan. That God was intending to send Joseph ahead so that the entire, the entire family of Jacob would be saved as a result of Joseph being sold into slavery. Remember when the brook dried up because of the drought, Elijah may have wondered, why did this happen? Do you know the Lord has everything under control? I think we can forget that. Somebody very wise said, why pray when you can worry? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like being an honest thief. You can't pray and worry at the same time. You're doing one or the other. Now, you need to realize this, and I know this is going to be tough for some of you guys, but this is, this is the truth. The Lord did not have to decree from before the foundation of the world that everything would take place through all eternity. God is greater than that. He gave men freedom of choice, and God still gets his business done in spite of them. God's will, will, will be done. How great is our God? Isn't it something that the Lord Jesus Christ has called us to be co-workers with him? Amen. Not rebels, not in opposing to what God is doing, but actually joining his forces to see the work done. How gracious is our God that he would allow us to enter into his labors. Imagine for a moment, this is another tough one, Imagine for a moment that you're not a robot that was programmed before the foundation of the world of every word and every action you'll ever say and everything you'll ever do. Realize that God gave us power to choose, right or wrong, good or evil. We are made in the image of God. We are granted power to choose our course in life and reap the blessings or the curses, depending on our choices. Just as the Lord directed the lives of the Bible characters, He directs our lives for our good and His glory. I think that some people need to get it out of their mind that God chose them to be a sinner. Do you know what God chose for us? I'm going to read it to you this evening. You'll find it in Ephesians chapter 1 amongst many places. This is what God preordained, preordained we should be. This is powerful. Ephesians, the first chapter, chapter number 1. That's Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, 
according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom we also have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ and in whom ye also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise." which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of His glory. So, you want to know what you're predestinated to be? Now you know. To be holy and pure and righteous. It's not God. It's our own way and the desire to have our own way that has ruined us. We need to stop complaining about the providence of God and rather get in step with Him. You remember Paul the Apostle when he was still named Saul. And Jesus appeared to him that day on the way to Damascus. Jesus said to him, Paul, stop kicking against the prick. A prick is simply a wooden stick with a point on it. And the herders would walk behind the cows and kind of poke them in the hind end and in the hind legs to keep them moving. And every once in a while, one of those cows would kick that stick. And when he did, it hurt a lot more than if he just kept moving. Paul said, God said to Paul, Paul, why are you kicking against the pricks? I ask you the same question today. It hurts more than if you'll just cooperate. Now, what is God's business anyway? The first business God has is to save our souls from a devil's hell. And the second part of his business is to get us in the harness to help him save others. Are you worried about the future? Why? The Lord has everything, everything under control. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said to me, well, aren't you going to take a pistol with you when you go on your vacation? I think I would rather depend on God to protect me. Amen. Amen. Jesus died on the cross exactly at the appointed time. He rose from the dead exactly three days later, as foretold by the prophets. God's plan and purpose is going forward. Let's begin to cooperate with God. Let's put our hand in His hand and let Him do the plan of our lives. You say, well, Brother Ledger, you know, I think God had a plan for me when I was younger, but I have just blown it out the window. I mean, there's no way in the world I could ever go back to God's plan. That's right. But you know what? God's got another one. He's got more plans than you ever imagined. I think, and this is my own opinion. I think that every time we make a moral decision in our lifetime, God has another plan. Now, that's pretty awesome, God, when you think about it. There's a lot of us, folks, billions of us. No problem for God. He could do this with one arm tied behind his back. Heed the word of truth and walk in the narrow way of holy living and true righteousness. Jesus will lead and guide us through life's journey. He that began a good work in you will finish it. Yield to his love. Surrender to his care. Trust him with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Remember, he not only loves us, he's all powerful. Even the enemy of our soul can't do a thing without his permission. Oh, I'll tell you what, that must really humiliate the enemy down on his knees before God. Please, sir, may I tempt? Put in your name. 
You know, God said to you about Job, thus far, no more. Amen. Faithful is he that called you who will also do it. Let's stand together. <laughs> you know, I cannot remember. It's such a big number. I couldn't possibly number all the people who have come to me and told me over the years, Brother Ledger, God sent me to this mission. But I believe it. Because God sent me to this mission. This is where I got saved 41 years ago. Do you know what God started in your life? He's willing to finish, if you'll let him. The Lord does things for a purpose. He has engineered circumstances around us for our good. And like the prodigal son, some of us need to come to our senses and return to Father's house. Jesus said, if any man will open the door when I knock... I will enter in. And just the other night in Bible study, remember the painting of Jesus standing at the door and knocking. No doorknob on the outside. It's got to be opened from within. He said, I will come in and I will dine with you and you with me. Amen. Father, we thank you for your gracious help this evening, and we just pray that you'd encourage our hearts in the days ahead. Lord, we don't know what's before us. Even the fortune tellers are totally befuddled. They have a no clue what's going to happen next. But Lord, you know, and I pray that you'd help us to keep our little hand in your big hand and walk with us and keep us, Lord, all the way to the end of the journey when we enter the heavenly world. And for your grace and help, we'll thank thee, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.